Okay, friends, welcome to part three of the studio renovation. So today is a very exciting day because now we're actually going to build the studio instead of building the space, we're going to build the studio. And that means we start with the table. So you can see the studio is crammed with stuff right now. Basically, I've gotten everything um, into the studio that I need into the studio. Everything basically is here except for the shelves. I got these big um, pieces of plywood. They're 1.8 centimeter um, pieces of plywood to build the tables with. Um, they are not very wide because I have a very small car. And to be honest, it's impressive that I even got these in that car. I actually had to buy the pieces for the tabletop in two pieces because that was way more affordable than getting the pieces delivered or renting a car. So the exciting thing is that basically everything that's going in the studio is in the studio. The only thing that I need left is to install some shelves on the back end. So I've got all my clay here. The wheels are those big boxes. And I have finally some storage solutions. So I have this new cabinet. Um, I picked this cabinet up used from uh, eBay Kleinenzeigen, which is basically like a Craigslist equivalent. And then this cabinet back here has been in our lives for a very long time. Um, so that's gonna be a really handy uh, storage solution. So what I want to do is like build kind of like a wall of cabinets. And one of these um, things is just going to be a, like a tabletop on that wall. And then right here, I'm going to have a table. But I need to make some space first because I'm planning on using the space to build the table. So first I need to like set up the cabinets and then organize all of my stuff. Okay, so I've cleared up the space on the floor and now I have a tentative order to everything. Obviously things are going to get moved around as I work, but I tried to group things in categories. Um, so why don't I show you how I arranged everything? So there's a few things I left on top. Um, I'm eventually going to put some shelves up here because I want to basically have an empty surface here. Um, so I'll have like a drying station up there. I'll have a place to put my scale um, and some bits and bobs that don't make sense to put in drawers. So first I have, um, this is just like the junk drawer kind of stuff. So pens and stuff, um, tape and scissors are always necessary. And this guy I'm constantly using. So I wanted him right up on top. And here is the clay tools drawer. Um, so far, I've got more tools elsewhere, but I thought this was pretty full already. Um, these are like my go-to tools, so I also wanted them like really accessible on the top. Um, now this is just random um, accessories. So like um, if I want to put a cork in a jar, I have that. Like these are like add-ons. I've got a lamp kit that I never ended up using and a fountain kit that I'm really excited to try using at some point. Tools, I'm probably actually gonna move those into another room because we actually have a, a tool room here now. Uh, so this I decided would be safety stuff. So I've got my goggles, some gloves. I'm gonna have a respirator in here. And then this, I just, more tools, more clay tools that I need to sort through. Here I have my scale um, and then I have some photo um, uh, accessories. So this is like a holder for your iPhone and then some candles. Um, extruder accessories and my cutting um, cookie cutters. Um, my sieves are in here, funnel. 
And then I decided to just put all of my um, fob crepe right in here. These are the stains. Oh, and this is empty. So I have bats and boards in here and some buckets. Here I have, yeah, my underglazes, um, more like cobalt and stuff was in here, more tools. <laughs> Oh, that's empty. And then these are actually supposed to be shoe. Um, it's a shoe cabinet, so that's why they open funny. Um, and I put stuff in here that I don't use very often. Um, so like stamps, I've got some random string and things um, like wire and stuff. I just, you know, you need it sometimes. Um, and then pieces of cloth for like drop uh, drape molds. And then down here, I have, yeah, these are for the top of my um, turntable. Um, these are all my bisque molds in here. I'm sure I'll unpack them and stick them out somewhere, but for now, I just thought I'd keep them safe. Um, these are my cone equivalents, so they're like um, rings, um, you know, kiln stuff. Extra sponges, and then these are, you know, extra containers that I'm sure I will use them bags. So yeah, that's all my small tools that I brought with me. So now that I have everything organized and I have space, um, let's start building the table. So I'm building this whole thing with wood that is seven by seven centimeters thick and two meters long. Um, you could probably go a little bit thinner, maybe uh, six by six centimeters or even like a two by four, but it all depends on the size of your table. So my table is going to be two meters by 80 centimeters. That's uh, six and a half by two and a half feet. Um, so if you want to scale up your table, definitely go with a bit thicker wood. And likewise, you can scale down the table too and use thinner wood. This is the table I'm going to be working and also wedging on. So it's important for me that it's extremely solid. So I went with a bit thicker wood. So here's the plan I'm working with. The special thing about this table is that I customize it to the height of my own specific body. Um, maybe you don't know this, but I'm quite a short person. Uh, so I decided I wanted the table to be comfortable standing height for me since I'm usually standing while I work. So if you want to do the same, what you need to do is measure from the floor up to your elbow while you're standing. This height should be the perfect height for your table. So in my case, it ended up being 80 centimeters tall. Here's the breakdown of all the measurements. This is based on wood that is seven by seven centimeters. So if you use a different wood, the measurements might end up being a little bit different. But don't worry, I'm going to go through all the steps so it should make sense how you can put it together even with slightly different measurements. So first I'm starting with a tabletop frame. Basically you want to make a big square that should be the final dimensions of your table. So my wood was already two meters long so I just had to cut the horizontal pieces. To screw them together, I'm using these extremely long screws and pre-drilling the holes. You need the screws to be long enough so that they go through one wood and at least halfway through the next. I think these were maybe something like 10 centimeters long. Yeah, anyway, they were long. <laughs> And then I needed a middle brace because the board for my tabletop was two pieces. You can skip this part completely if you manage to get a board that would fit the entire tabletop. Okay, now onto the legs. So this part would be a lot easier if you had a second person. Um, I just made do with a chair. Uh, if you're doing this alone, please take your time so you don't get hurt. So adding cross beams is extremely important to create stability. I made mine the height so that I can comfortably rest my feet on while working, but you can also add a shelf down here if you like. Before we add the tabletop, we want to add the wheels. If you're adding wheels, make sure that you invest in wheels that have a brake as well. These ones are really solid with all the brakes pressed, but it will give me the flexibility to move around the table if I need to. 
And when you're preparing the measurements, make sure you figure in the height of the wheels. These add something like seven centimeters of height. Lastly, we want to add the tabletop. I want my surface to be completely flat, so I'm pre-drilling my holes and making sure to screw the screws deep enough so that they lay beneath the surface, if that makes sense. Later, we can go in with some wood filler to make it flat. If you're working with two pieces of tabletop like I am, you'll need to screw along the middle into the middle beam as well. Here I'm adding the wood filler. Add it generously to the top of the screw holes. I also applied it along the gap between the two tabletops. Once it's dry, you can sand it down. So to finish, I decided to apply a wood oil instead of a sealant. This will protect the wood from damage, but also keep it porous. So if I work directly on the surface of the table, the clay won't stick as much. However, if you find yourself to be the type of person who leaves puddles of water on your tabletop, you might want to go ahead for an oil-based sealant instead. So that's it for the table build. Um, I've actually been using this table for a few weeks already and um, it works just great. Um, it's really stable despite having the wheels um, with all of the wheels locked. It's yeah, quite stable. And I really am glad I chose the oil top instead of the polyurethane uh, or sealant top um, because uh, I can actually work directly on the surface now because the surface does have porosity. So I don't need a wedging board to roll out um, like a coil of clay or anything, I can just do it right on the surface, which is nice. And it's also smooth enough so that I can easily like wipe down uh, the surface as well. So that's really cool. I'm really happy with the table. In the meantime, I've also built some shelves. Ta-da! <laughs> so I've got the process for that over on my Instagram. So if you want to uh, see how I built those shelves, that's over there. Um, I've also have now, a cabinet in the corner. Um, what I need to do is add a cloth or something hanging down in front. Um, so I want to store my camera equipment in here. So I wanted something to be closed. So like the dust isn't going to get on my cameras. Um, yeah, let me know what color cloth I should get or maybe a nice pattern. And then I also built these shelves. So I'm not going to go into a tutorial about these shelves because it's very simple. Well, on my end, it was kind of complicated because um, there's not, this is not like a normal wall. It's just um, foam that's covered with drywall. So I had to drill extremely deep. I actually used the same screws that I used on the table um, to screw like, yeah, 10 centimeters into the wall. But yeah, so now I have a place that I can dry my pieces and a bit more shelving. Still have to do some organizing. It's a little chaotic still, but yeah. And then, so this is still exactly how it was before. Um, I need to build this out somehow. It's a bit low and it's literally just balancing on these blocks. So let me know if you want a video on that build. Um, otherwise I'm just going to do it in peace <laughs> without having to deal with the recording process. Um, but if you're curious about how I build like a kind of built-in cabinet type thing, um, I'd be happy to share it. So yeah, let me know in the comments down below. Otherwise, that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, you can find me over at Pottery to the People. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, friends.